And a very warm welcome to OmniFocus Workflows with David Sparks. And it's a treat to have my friend David back for his third appearance on Learn OmniFocus. And he's definitely been an inspiration to me over the years, and I'm sure he'll have a lot of valuable things to share as we go through the session today. I want to welcome you to Learn OmniFocus uh, if you're here for the first time. This is a site I founded in June of 2014, so we're very close to the 10th anniversary as we record this, so it's really exciting to have reached this milestone. And the intention from the beginning is to support people in living a fulfilling and productive life with some help from OmniFocus. And so it's really about much more than OmniFocus. Uh, we get into various productivity methodologies and complementary apps and so forth, and uh, give you some guidance for developing habits and kind of building your productivity skills. And the one thing that ties it all together, though, is we all use OmniFocus, so it helps to have that, that common ground. So a little taste of what's new and what's coming down the pike. First of all, there's a brand new course I just published yesterday called Getting Back on Track with OmniFocus 4. So if you maybe started using OmniFocus with great enthusiasm, but things went off the rails at some point, maybe life uh, went off on a tangent, you got busy, you uh, you didn't pay proper attention to your system, it's kind of like not weeding a garden for a while, it can get kind of unruly. This course is all about getting back on track and and staying on the rails. So we'll look at, in the course, your productivity system. So understanding what does that actually mean to you? What are all the different components? What are some pieces that are maybe missing from your system that are causing OmniFocus to become overloaded? And then there's a section on getting back on track. Um, so how can you deal with a, an overflowing inbox? And maybe you've got hundreds of tags and dozens of perspectives and projects that are in disarray. So the second section is all about how to reconcile that. And there wouldn't be much point getting back on track if you went off the rails a couple of days later. So the third section is really all about uh, building habits and systematic features into your OmniFocus setup and your other tools to make sure that you stay on track. So this goes into a lot of depth on these topics, and uh, there's a lot of practical guidelines as you go through. And I've been creating these courses since OmniFocus 4 came out in December of last year. And there's currently four OmniFocus 4 specific courses, including ones that are more focused on the features and recommended practices. And there's one on focus. And then the most recent one is the getting back on track. And all of these courses have captions in a variety of different languages. And there's also a full course video. So if you want to just sit down with some popcorn and go through the whole course, uh, you can now do that. And you can also go through it lesson by lesson. And a recent change that I made is to separate out the live sessions so that all of the kind of informational content is pre-recorded, including the courses. And then having workshops where you watch the course and go through the course, maybe review lessons, try out some of the stuff, and then you come to a workshop to apply it. And I'll take you through a guided process as, as you go through these workshops. So the first workshop is coming very soon, and it centers around the getting back on track with OmniFocus 4. So the idea is you watch that specific course and then come and join the workshop and really engage with the material. So I'm really looking forward to offering that very soon. And if you go to learnomnifocus.com forward slash live, you can register in that upcoming one. And then office hours are a long-standing tradition of Learn OmniFocus. And this is kind of like the Learn OmniFocus Clubhouse. You can meet people from our international community. There's just some amazing people I've gotten to know over the years. And even if you don't have any specific questions or you're new to OmniFocus, you're very welcome to, to come and join in. Uh, it's a great source of inspiration for myself and I think for, for the participants as well. And if you're finding you're not getting things done, all the stuff you're putting into OmniFocus, there's virtual co-working sessions, and you'll have three 25-minute focus blocks. We'll do some accountability checks at the beginning and in between. And then at the end, you'll have a chance to 
notice what you learned, what worked in terms of your focus work, uh, where you fell short, things like that. So it's about getting work done, but it's also about kind of learning to focus and honing your focus skills. And 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after, I have what I call a lounge. I can just come and hang out and have some social time, get to know the people from our community. Okay, and now it's my pleasure to welcome David, aka Max Berkey, back to Learn OmniFocus. And uh, I first learned of David through his blog. It's been going a very long time now, maxberkey.com. And I was also an instant convert to the Mac Power Users podcast, which I think goes back to 2009. And uh, later, David added the Automators and Focus podcasts. And I've been on all of these at least once. In fact, the day after Learn OmniFocus launched, I was on the Mac Power Users podcast. I, I think I need to go back and uh, listen to that one. It'll be interesting to see how my perspective has changed over the years. And I was looking back at my records and David and I first connected back in 2009. And then I met up with him and, and Katie at uh, Macworld in 2010. And I attended uh, David's workshop called Mac at Work. Um, so David's gone deep into the, the Macworld and just has a very long history of supporting many Mac and, and later iPhone and iPad users, myself included. I've definitely got a lot out of what he's shared. And we've had a chance to meet up in person a few times. A couple of memorable moments, the OmniFocus setup event in 2013. And then I was at the MacStock conference and expo in 2019. David quit his job as a lawyer and uh, that allowed him time to do much more. He founded the Mac Sparky Labs. So if you've always wanted to kind of peek over David's shoulder and see what he's up to and all the amazing technology he's looking at, this is a great community to be, a, to be a part of. I'm a member myself and really enjoy watching the videos and going to some of the live sessions. And you can learn more about that at maxsparky.com forward slash join. David's also very well known for his field guides and he's got uh, not sure how many now they started off as books and now they're video field guides and i've uh, learned a lot from watching these uh, a lot of these cover apps that uh, we've focused on here on learn omnifocus so if you really want to take a deep dive into an app and for apps that you do use regularly i recommend getting to know them well then um, yeah i don't think there's any better place to go than uh, these max sparky field guides and the one that's coming out very soon is the OmniFocus 4 field guide. And, and I've been through most of it. Yeah, there's a lot of great information there. David really shows in a real world situation how he uses OmniFocus and what he's learned over the years. And we'll be getting a good taste of that as we go through today's session. All right, now it's my pleasure to hand it over to you, David. Well, thanks, Tim. Uh, it, you have been inspiring to me as well as this Learn OmniFocus community. I love that there's a group of people just dedicated to getting the most out of this very powerful application. I thought um, I should probably start just kind of explaining my own history with OmniFocus. Um, back in the day, um, you, Tim has been around long enough. The, the task managers on the Mac were abysmal you know i at one point i called it a wasteland um i remember there was an app called igtd which was made by a third-party developer which was okay but barely kind of ran and then ethan schoonover who is in our community took the popular omni outliner application and he made like a layover on it um, which he called kinkless gtd and that was the orig origin of OmniFocus. That was using Omni Outliner to become a task manager. And I think the Omni group took notice of that and realized, well, maybe we should just make a task manager. And I remember uh, meeting King Case at Macworld when hearing that they were working on this and, and getting a, a feel for it. And it was like, oh, finally somebody is making a real grown-up task manager for the Mac. And for those of us that have been there from the beginning, it really was night and day at the time uh, what OmniFocus provided compared to anything else. Now, a lot of years have gone by. It's been what, 15 years now. Um, I am a uh, chronic um, software 
tester. I anything new that comes out, I always want to play with and see and you know poke at. That's one of the reasons why I have Max Sparky. But despite it all, despite all the task managers, and there've been a lot of great task managers that come out since then. I still use OmniFocus, and it, it's an interesting question. Like, well, why is it that somebody who likes to switch apps up every once in a while would still use the same app? And and I even went on a little bit of a journey last year because, as Tim mentioned, I, I was a practicing attorney for 30, almost 30 years. And then I decided to just do Max Sparky. And I thought, well, once I'm no longer an attorney, maybe I don't need the power of OmniFocus. And I tried Apple Reminders. I tried some of the new interesting online stuff. I tried Obsidian. And none of them were really as good as OmniFocus for task management. And that, that's just kind of at the end of the day. If you know OmniFocus and you understand how to use it, and I grant that there's an on-ramp for this app, but once you learn it, there's just nothing that can hold a candle to it. So, so I am a I remain a big OmniFocus fan after all these years. It's interesting to me how the app continues to evolve. Um, a couple things, and I know Tim, you've done specific treatment of this at Learn OmniFocus, but I feel like the automation like has kicked into a fifth gear in OmniFocus over the last couple of years with the arrival of Sal Segoyan and some of the stuff they're doing behind the scenes. Um, the, the, um, you know, the, the fact that they're on Swift UI and they are able to now release new features across all platforms with a single release. Um, you know, like the fact that Apple made an entirely new platform, the Vision Pro, and their own app, Reminders, is not have a native app, but OmniFocus does. Stuff like that just makes me feel like I made the right choice, you know? <laughs> and um, so I continue to use it. I'm, I continue to be a fan of it. Um, one of my first video field guides was OmniFocus, the first version, and I've made a new one for each subsequent version. Uh, as an app I use every day, I feel like this is something I want to share um, the, you guys are an interesting crowd, though, because the folks here at Learn OmniFocus are not here to learn about how to create a new project. You guys are pros. And I wanted to talk today about a couple things on my mind with OmniFocus, what I'll call kind of advanced concepts and ways I'm using it. I'm not trying to convert anybody here, but I'm just telling you how it's evolved for me and ways that are working for me. And uh, we can talk about it. You know, I'd be happy to answer questions about it as we go through it. But I've, I've got a couple topics for you. All right. So I've shared a little bit of my OmniFocus journey with you. So let me just kind of get started with what I call pool-based OmniFocus. It's just a little concept I've been working with. So for a long time, my run with OmniFocus, managing tasks, I felt like was a high-wire act. And that was because I was building the Max Sparky enterprise at the same time I was practicing law with a stable of like 80 clients and I just had a lot going on and OmniFocus was essential to make sure that I didn't break anything or do anything that was you know not right I needed to you know take care of my clients not drop any balls there but I also the Max Sparky thing was important to me in addition to all the other life commitments I have so I had very um I just call tense systems, you know, using uh, many perspectives, a lot of flag-based priority and tag-based priority. And I really had a, a high-wire act to keep everything going without having any plates crash to the floor. I never really felt comfortable as a task manager um, because of that. And this is, you know, probably 10 years worth of OmniFocus use. And I think it's because I just had too much to do. And ultimately, um, the best thing I ever did for task management was to give up uh, the career of being a lawyer. And of course, there's cost to giving up a career. <laughs> but, the, um, but for me, it suddenly kind of opened up channels for me to be more focused on one thing instead of trying to do two things at once. I mean, who would have guessed doing two big jobs at once is hard? Um, but the... Uh, but uh, when I when I decided to choose one, suddenly that opened up new options, not only in the way I do my work, but in the way I manage my tasks. And I don't need the high wire act anymore, but OmniFocus still serves me, I believe. And the the thing I've come to realize, and uh, for those of you, I know there's some, some Max Sparky customers here that have gone through like the productivity field guide. And the, in the productivity field guide, I explained that to me, the most important thing in life is 
picking the roles that are important to you and making progress. I've been very careful with that with my OmniFocus app. Now, there's a few uh, projects and folders here that are related to the new field guide coming. They're, they're sample things. But if you look below that, all of these are roles that I have chosen. Husband, father, brother, uncle, friend, Max Sparky, Sparky OS, spiritual human, creative human, Padawan, which means like a lifelong learner, health, altruistic, and household. So I've got these various hats I wear. And, and so OmniFocus is a filter for me to begin with. I have a folder for each role that I've chosen. And if someone asks me to do something that creates a new project and it doesn't fit in one of these folders, then I usually stop and say, well, wait a second, why am I doing this? Because the roles that are most important to me are already delineated. And if someone says, you know, for me to do something that's not one of these roles, I probably should turn it down because I have plenty of work to do in the things that are important to me. So. I'm using a roles-based system, and OmniFocus is a primary filter for me in that because tasks and projects go in OmniFocus, and if they don't fit in an existing role, then I have to either create a new role, which I, I'm very hesitant to do because I'm already busy with the ones I have, or maybe I just don't do that thing. So that's the first level of kind of resistance I get with OmniFocus. But the other thing is these become... Um, in addition to filters, they become buckets. So in each one, I've got a list of projects and tasks and things that are important to do. And just to give you an example, I go really high with hierarchy in this stuff. The Max Sparky is the easiest one to share. It's not nothing too personal here. But I've got the admin, I've got the field guides, the blog, the labs, the podcast, the newsletter, all this, the various things I do. And in those, there are sub projects and and things I work on. What I've been trying to do now is combine OmniFocus with block scheduling and what I call a pull-based task management system. So what I do, and this is not entirely unlike what Kurash said. I, I attended Kurash's session a month or two ago, and and we're we're very similar in our thoughts on this. Um, I think he uh, he talks about visit-based. I talk about pull-based, and I think his. You know he's smarter than I am, so maybe his idea is better. But the uh, but the way I do it is I I pick blocks of time for each one of these categories that are important to me. Just as an example, if you look at my do perspective, which is my kind of primary operating perspective, well, I already got ready for today, so I'm going to check that one off. But you see, I have one here called Consider OmniFocus for Field Guide Block O four FG. That's shorthand for me. Well, I'm getting ready to, to launch this new product, so. This thing is on a repeat formula and it shows up for me every day because I'm launching next week. Uh, normally they don't have these repeat formulas every day, but I set repeat formulas on block consideration. So I wake up in the morning and say, okay, this OmniFocus tells me I should be thinking about OmniFocus for a field guide. Now what it doesn't put here is the list of eight things I need to do in OmniFocus for a field guide today. Uh, instead, it's telling me to consider that block. And if I do it, and I don't have it tied to this one, normally I have a URL link, you know, but I can do that. So I can go here. There it is. So usually what I would do is I would grab the URL, copy his link, and I keep that linked in the notes for these consider blocks. And I just didn't do it in this one for whatever reason. So you put the note there, and then you can just click the link and go to it. Now, this is the tricky part, right? You set a block. Uh, it says consider a block. Well, what does a block mean? Well, to me, that's where I have to use my judgment. And I'm launching this um, on Monday, next Monday. So today, a block for me will be a three-hour block. So I'll block a three-hour block in my calendar and then when the time comes, I can click this and go to this and I can go through and I can see all the stuff that I want to do concerning the OmniFocus 4 field guide. These are some feedback I want to get back, a couple little final points I want to make, and I'll just work through that. So these are not tagged items and, and if there are priority items, I'll, we can talk about that later, but, but generally most of my stuff isn't super priority anymore. I'm no longer a trial lawyer. I don't have to get a motion filed by next week or commit malpractice. So I become much easier on myself about due dates and flags. 
but I'm much harder on myself in terms of making sure I'm working on the important stuff. So I've got these consider blocks uh, now sprinkled all throughout OmniFocus. Like I've got one that says consider the newsletter, which I'll do on Monday. And I've got one consider writing blog posts, which I do on Sunday and Thursday. So I've got these blocks. They show up, and then on the day that they show up, I look at my calendar and try and put blocks into them. Now, uh, it's only through experience that you learn how long those blocks need to be in order for you to keep up with the important stuff. But it's been a, you know, a fun process for me to suddenly feel like task management isn't such a chore. I don't wake up to see this do list with 50 items on it that I've got to uh, suddenly prioritize. Instead, I'm giving myself the grace to just pick and choose my targets, but the targets have to be in the important blocks related to my life. I've got blocks, you know, these consider blocks considering things for my wife and for my family. And like I try to call a different friend every week, and that's a block. So OmniFocus is giving me these reminders. I'm setting blocks and then I'm linking them out to projects. And then I go in there and I snipe off tasks on those projects. If there's something on that list that does have a flag, I'll do that first. You know, If there's something on there that has a due date, well, in this due perspective, it does show things that have due dates. Like if you look at the perspective, it looks for due soon and flagged as well. So those will show up on the daily list. But largely, my daily list no longer is this massive list of items. It's just, you know, it's just this do consider blocks thing. And I set blocks and I go and I hit them. And um, and so I consider that a pull-based system in the way that I'm pulling tasks up as needed and I don't think about them otherwise. Once I finish this block, I can check that off and then it'll show up again tomorrow because the repeat formula on this one is very fast because I've got this thing releasing. But once I release it, this one will come up maybe once every seven days. And then a few months after release, considering OmniFocus for Field Guide will come up every month. It's, you know, everything you know, just gets set over time. We're all, you know, fancy OmniFocus users here. I can tell you that I looked at different means for pulling this off in OmniFocus. One of them was rather than making these consider blocks just to dramatically increase the review frequency. Like, why don't I just say, review this OmniFocus for a field guide project every two days, and then it comes up for review every two days It forces me to go into it. That didn't work for me because I do review at the end of the day. And these consider blocks show up in the morning. It helps me kind of plan the day. Um, another thing I do, because I'm doing these blocks, I have what I call checklist items. And checklist items are just little things that repeat all the time. And uh, I played with several different formats of making this. The one I, I like is here's my checklist. And you see, this doesn't show up in the do perspective. But these are things that do show up. And they all have a tag attached to them depending on the amount of time I spend on them. Like lately, I've been really trying to document my tech stack, write down what I use and why. So I have a weekly checklist item that shows up for that. I've been very remiss. I haven't done it now for about a month because I've been busy with this new field guide. But let's say I did that today. I'll check that off and it'll disappear until a week from now. And that's just using a repeat formula based on start date and setting it off. Actually, this is once a month. This isn't weekly. All right. Um, I run monthly computer backups. That's due. I'll do that this weekend. Um, I Every month I try to create a new small productivity experiment. I like the idea of trying something new every month and seeing how it goes. I got to schedule my haircut, um, consider cleaning the studio, uh, monthly planning as we record this is near the end of the month, so I'm starting to plan for next month. And then I have to audit the garden. So these are little checklists. Now I'm going to change the view here to... Um, uh, show instead of available, I'm just going to show remaining. And you'll see that there's this massive list that I have that I go through. Like, it's silly. Like, on the husband role, I try to do something nice for my wife every day, you know, and I have a little checklist for that. Um, for uh, Max Sparky ad uh, admin, I back up the stream deck once a month. And all of these have week, month, year checklist um, tags attached to them. And if you look at the the perspective you see it's looking for uh daily or checklist because i at one point i had tried to make it just checklist but i think it's better to do this weekly monthly or quarterly and then i've got more like annual and and so anything that has that on it 
shows up in this list. And then I can just tag things to it. Now, these can be in different projects. Like you see um, um, Max Sparky, uh, uh, Sparky OS Habits. That's what I call my self kind of improvement project. Every week I pick something new to learn from. So I do that every week. And tomorrow that one will show up on the checklist. So I'll pick a, pick a book to read next week or something to learn about, you know. Uh, actually, I ended up with two of those. Um, and then uh, I'm a short form subscriber. Every week I download my three allotted downloads from there. Um, if you look, you know, just if you look through here, I don't want to get into all the personal stuff, but the, um, but, you know, I've got a bunch of different items that show up as these checklist items. And then the trick is once you get the perspective built, then you just show it as, as they become available and that is uh that's the trick and then suddenly you've got a very manageable daily checklist you look at now this isn't mandatory to me but every day in the afternoon i look at the checklist and see if there's anything i need to do to get done and like i said each one of these is built on a repeat formula um this one is once a month uh let's see here uh, monthly planning is interesting i do that on the 27th of each month and that gives me a few days to get the monthly planning done before the beginning of the next month. So that shows up each month on 27th and it repeats from completion. So um, I just check it off and then it'll show up next month once I do the monthly planning. And I don't feel like these are have to do's every day. They're more like optional to do's every day. And sometimes things will, will delay a little bit, like create new small experiment. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to hit shift D to go into the defer and type Saturday and when I have time on Saturday, I'll, do, I'll figure out the new experiment for next month. Same thing for the haircut. I'm going to go ahead and set that to Monday. So, you know, so I can go through it, then hit Command K, and then my daily checklist. I, I kind of manage it. I try to do what I can, but if things aren't going to get done and I just want to defer them out, I'll, I'll defer them out. But uh, this is kind of an overflow for this new pool-based system because I need a way to still deal with checklist items, but I don't want them to become a source of stress. Instead, for me, they're just this list I work from in the background. One of the things that I do in OmniFocus that I know Tim doesn't do, I, I never want to disappoint Tim, guys. I think about that every time I use OmniFocus. But if you look at my OmniFocus settings, um, the, um, the organization, clean up inbox when it, with items that have a project. It doesn't say both a project and a tag. Now, I think this is going to give me internal damnation from Tim. But I have decided after using this app for 15 years that I don't need tags on everything. And uh, I use them where they're convenient. You can see I, they're the foundation of my checklist system. But there's a lot of things that just don't need a tag. And I found myself making up stupid tags, like, you know, online or just like tags that I don't use practically. So, What's the point of them? I'd rather have tags matter to me. Like a good one for me, a good tag for me is customer support. You know, one of the challenges of my my business is people ask me questions and they want me to email them answers. And, and, and they ask me questions across the board, whether it's about what I wrote in the productivity field guide or the OmniFocus field guide or in the Max Sparky Labs. So those, those tasks to respond to those show up across different projects. Put a customer service tag in there and then I've got a customer service a uh, place I can go to and get all those emails in one place organized by topic. Well, that's very useful. So, so those are tags I like, but I decided hell with it. I'm not going to put a project and tag on every task. I, I started doing that a couple of years ago and I never told you, Tim, I was shamed. Uh, but now my dirty secret is out. The key thing is this is a personal task manager. And the nice thing is you can use it however you want. And, uh, I think, yeah, in your case, David, you've been using it for so long and you've tried a bunch of different things and you've landed on something that really works well for you. Uh, I personally put a tag on everything just because I worry about things falling through the cracks otherwise. Uh, and I think at some point I, I tried not putting tags on everything, but yeah, I just felt a little bit uneasy about losing t actions within the system or going out to run errands and missing going to a store 30 minutes away because yeah, there was nothing to tell me to go there. So I, th I think you have a very disciplined use of the system though. So the probably putting a tag on everything is 
much less necessary. And I think it comes back to the type of work you do and then, yeah, and how much of it is location based. And yeah, there's, there's, it's a, it's a fairly, I think it's a very personal thing when it comes right down to it. I, I feel like well, one of the things in my, in my journey of looking at OmniFocus alternatives is frankly, a lot of the Aaron stuff is no longer in OmniFocus for me. Um, the reminders feature of shared lists and like shopping lists, like the target list, the grocery list, and my wife and I share all of that stuff. So I don't use OmniFocus for those bits. So maybe that's one reason why I felt that way. But either way, I, I, I gave up on trying to make up tags for everything. I use them when they make sense. I don't use them when they don't make sense. But I'm not telling you, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do here. I'm just kind of sharing you know, my approach to this. Uh, another approach I have that is uh, is odd, I think, is the aggressive use of the email capture in OmniFocus. I have struggled with email forever. Anybody who knows me knows this is like one of my biggest problems. I get a lot of email from people that ask me questions about stuff I talk about on the podcast and the field guides. And I feel like those emails are kind of sacred. People write me they, with a question. I want to help them. I want to respond to them, but it's a burden in the sense that there's just so much of it that I could spend all day. And the problem with emails, when you answer an email, then they write back. And so you got to answer again. And, but I, I really struggle with ways to keep this in check. Like I want to answer it, but I also have to get the work done. And I've tried so many different solutions. I've used like folders in Apple mail with same box rules. I've tried, you know, this is, I've tried a lot and and I've even like hired people to take care of some of it for me, but there's still a lot for me to handle. And the more options I try, the more I come back to the original solution, which is you just take an email when it comes in and somebody says, hey, in the productivity field guide, you wrote about this. I have a question about it. And then, and so what I do is I immediately capture it to OmniFocus. I save the email, you know, we all, I'm sure Tim has covered this so much, but you know, you can very quickly capture an Apple mail email to OmniFocus. And then you, at the moment, you assign it to the project related to the learning media. So in the case of productivity field guide, I would give it, I'd go PFG and I would put it in the productivity field guide. And then under the tag, I would say CS, which gives it a customer support tag. And then I have blocks called customer support. And I go through customer support. I hit the block. I give it two hours. I answer as many as I can. And because they're an OmniFocus sorted by topic, it's so much easier. My brain doesn't have to shift gears. Like I can answer all the ones related to productivity field guide. And my brain can be in productivity field guide mode. And then I can go to OmniFocus field guide and answer all the ones related to that. And my brain is in that mode. So the whole system works quite well. People see me doing it, they're like, well, isn't, aren't you creating a bunch of work for yourself? Because every time you see an email, you have to add a to OmniFocus, add a project, add a tag. That seems like a lot of work. Um, to me, if it's something that's going to take any amount of time to respond to, um, it's worth it to me. If it's something I can respond to quickly, you know, the old David Allen adage, I think under two minutes or whatever, I'll answer those quickly. But if it's something that I want to think about, um, Putting it in a folder in mail adds to my cognitive load in a way that I don't appreciate. Um, and also, it just doesn't give me a way to track it. And then you go into that folder, and everything's a jumble. You know, the first one is about productivity field guide. The next one is about the labs. The next one is about OmniFocus. And uh, I believe that whenever you context shift your brain, you pay a price. So rather than do that, the way I do it just takes a moment, and they're organized, and I can answer them that way. But... Um, I've tried so many different solutions to this and I keep coming back to this and I realize I need to stop trying to find a different solution because OmniFocus, this is something OmniFocus excels at, you know, dealing with high volume email that you want to answer later, uh, adding it to me, that's just the way to go. Could use custom perspectives to say something like, show me all the emails that I added more than three days ago or something that I haven't yeah. responded to. Or, yeah. So it does give a lot of options in terms of being able to Kind of yes. slice and dice how that that list appears, which you don't exactly. get in mail beyond using like smart lists or something like that. Exactly. It's just it's way better than trying to manage it out of an email application. I've tried them all. Another one is uh, benefits of daily review. I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, I decided because when I first started using OmniFocus for years, I did a weekly review 
And I realized that my attention span isn't up to that. Um, because after about 15 or 20 minutes of review, I don't, I just start marking things as reviewed. I don't give them the, the consideration they deserve. So as part of my daily shutdown routine, I go through review. And, and I'm also very specific about review increments. I mean, I think the original David Allen recommendation was every week you review every project. I don't do that. I mean, I've got some projects that only get reviewed every six months. It just kind of depends what the project is, but I'm, I think about that. And I, and one of the, the beauties of OmniFocus is in the review process, you can set uh, the time increment, but then when it does show up, then properly review it. I mean, that's one of the great benefits of this application that you don't get with any other app. So, so review, but, but I find doing it daily is the best. Some days you don't do it. Like yesterday, I had a friend out of town. I, I, I didn't get much work done. Today, my review will be a little heavier because of that. But just keep up with it. And uh, I think if you've never tried doing it daily, I would recommend that. I think you might find that you can do a better job of reviews. And then the other weird thing I do with OmniFocus, I like the idea of an index card for my task list. And so what I do is I started buying these overpriced index cards. And then I go through OmniFocus in the morning and I just write down on it the blocks and the the pro, the um the appointments and the things I'm going to do that day. And this is the part that's going to freak people out. I mark them as done in OmniFocus. Like at that point they're on a card I've committed, I'm going to get it done today. And at the end of the day, if it's not done, I may write it on the card for tomorrow or I may undo it in OmniFocus and put it back into the mix, but but then throughout the day, I don't really have OmniFocus open. I capture stuff into it all day. But um, I just work off the card as I work through the day. And this is just me. I, I don't think anybody needs to copy me on this. But I just find it kind of beneficial to, to just have that thing handwritten by me in the morning. I realize this takes extra time. But I don't think it takes more than two or three minutes to fill out the card. And I find that I get more done because of it. So it's worthwhile to me. And I've had so much since I start, I talk about this in Max Market Labs and everybody tells me I'm crazy. They're like, well, you have the widgets and you have all these. Widgets. That's true. But I just don't don't want to do that. Now, I will go into OmniFocus during a block because the card isn't going to have the list of all the pull, the pull stuff I'm doing, you know. But but in general, I, I work generally through the card and um, and then on the list and the projects as I go throughout the day. But that's kind of um, where I'm at with it right now. Uh, and in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm more comfortable with task management now than I've ever been in my life. But getting back to kind of the beginning, my opening comments, that comes down to me making a big decision to do less. And um, and I guess one of the things to take away from OmniFocus is even if you're a master at this application, but you still feel like you live in chaos, maybe the problem isn't the software. You know, Maybe you're doing too much and you need to take a serious look at that. But um, that's uh, that's kind of an update on what I'm doing these days. The OmniFocus for Field Guide is coming out on Monday. Um, for Learn OmniFocus people, I there may be some useful stuff in there for you. I don't know. It's going to be, I think, about 92 videos, about eight hours of training on OmniFocus. There is a six-part webinar series if you get the Plus version. And that is going to be, I think, really beneficial because like, like we have in Learn OmniFocus, you have interaction with people talking about how they're using the app. And I think that's always beneficial. Um, but you know, check it out, see what you think. I, I will get a, uh, uh, I will get links and everything to Tim so you can, you can check it out and there'll be a launch discount to 10% when it goes out. So I'll get all the details to Tim if you guys are interested, but, but either way, I just wanted to kind of share with some OmniFocus power users what I'm up to. Yeah. I think it's a perfect time to go into some questions. They've been piling up in the chat. Uh, one question is about what is the difference between, uh, consider and review uh, what do you do in your review process versus how does review and consider differ basically? Yeah, sure. So con yeah. consider means to me, consider creating a block to work on that project, to pull from that project today. And review is just reviewing the project status and the consider block, the consider, um, tasks show up in the morning. And, and I'm very careful about the word consider. I, I believe I got the idea from Kurash Dini, but I'm not sure where it, where it came but consider is such a forgiving word in a task manager. So I'm going to consider whether I do an OmniFocus for field guide block today. And this morning I decided, yes, I am. Once I finish with him, <laughs> I'm going to 
block out three hours and work on it. But consider means I don't have to do it today. And I can say, well, no, I'm not going to do that today. I'm not, not feeling it. I'm going to work on something else. And so consider shows up and, and each project like the OmniFocus for Appeal Guide project, I frequently make these consider repeating tasks. And I usually put them on some kind of time increment. Like uh, for the blog, I have one that shows up uh, uh, weekly, but on two days. It shows up on Sunday and Thursday. And that way I can kind of catch up with things and write a few blog posts and get them into the system so JF can you know, queue them up to post at the website. And then I, and I try and do it at the beginning and the end of the week. And so that one is a repeat formula, Monday, Thursday, weekly. Um, this OmniFocus 4 one right now is daily. Next week, that will that, that increment will increase. Um, uh, I have them for recording podcast ads because I have a couple of podcasts. shows up once a week. You know, In fact, I know it shows up on Monday, and I try to record them on Monday. But I do that consider block because I may look at and say, well, I'm not going to do them today. I'm going to do on Wednesday because I have a lot going on today on Monday. And so that's what consider is to me. It's it's a prompt for me to block time to do something. And review is exactly as it's meant to be by, you know, as handed down by David Allen. You know, at the end of the day, I take a project and I say, okay, um, first of all, should this project still exist? You know, can I kill it? No, I can't kill it. This is something I need to do. Is it stalled? Okay, it's stalled. What do I need to do to fix that? And I, and I take steps to fix it. Or, oh, this project's doing fine. It's good. Or this project's on track and I don't even need to think about it for another month. Set the next review in a month and check it off. You know, So I, I go through and do a proper review with review at the end of the day. And just to clarify on consider, I, I use it as well. I think Kurash was the person who introduced that concept to me and I've, I've always found it very useful. At some point, though, I've find the consider is if it's something time-based at some point I need to transition from considering something to doing it because there's some sort of a due date or I've gotten tired of considering it for the last three months or something and I just want to get the thing done does that sort of change to a more imperative from a more well, of an invitation at some point yeah I, I don't use consider on every task like I'm switching dentists now and I got the email this morning and said, you're coming to next Monday, please fill out the online form. So that got a flag and it said, fill out the dentist forms and it linked back to the email. And then and I set it for 2 PM today. So after this afternoon, I'll go and figure it out. That never got to consider because that needs to be done. I'm going there next Monday. I want the forms filled out. Um, the consider for me in the way I've been describing it today is mainly about setting a block. As I was saying earlier, to me, the foundation of my system is not tasks, it's time blocks. And I try to give myself grace with the tasks. I'm not gonna do all the tasks. None of us are gonna finish everything we got on OmniFocus, but, but I try to give myself discipline with the blocks. And I've chosen through, you know, I don't wanna go through the whole productivity field guide, but you know, I have roles and each role has needs time for me to make progress to pursue my best self in that. So if I have discipline to create blocks to do the hard stuff, and then in that block, I go and pull things out of OmniFocus, that's a, a good system for me. It feels less stressful, but at the end of the day, I actually make more progress in the things most important. I think a, with a task, if you use tasks as the foundation of your system, it's very easy to think that you know, uh, the most important thing and the least important thing are on equal footing because they show they each take one line in the task manager. And when you can set blocks based on your biggest priorities, then that kind of changes the way you look at it. So I guess, yeah, I'm sorry, I went off on tangent, but to answer your question, so consider for me is to consider making a block of that important thing today. And I, I, you know, I say I bring discipline to it, but I also bring some grace to say, well, maybe I just don't have time to work on that today for whatever reason, and I can push it off to a future day. John's asking, why don't you have the checklist items show up in the do perspective? They're not that important. Nothing in there is is mission critical. Like I've got one this morning I went through, I need to up, uh, change the filter in the air conditioner. You know, uh, you saw the ones I've got here. None of these, if I get through today and I don't touch any of these, it's not the end of the world. You know, I just try to keep up with it. And again, this is me trying to make the process of doing tasks a little more 
gentle than you know the old days when I was a lawyer and it was like every day I looked at OmniFocus as my master. You know, now it's my partner. Mm, yeah, that's a great distinction. The uh, in terms of the checklist perspective, do you aim to clear that perspective by the end of the day, either by doing them or deferring them, or do you just let some things sit in there sometimes? Usually, I I clear it by the end of the day, but sometimes it'll go two or three days and I don't touch it because I get wrapped up in things like finish and feel good. Yeah, and there's nothing in there that's going to be too disruptive. It sounds like. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And see, Dean's commenting that I still tag everything. One way of looking at a tag in a very generic sort of way is when you put something into a project, you're adding it to a list. When you tag something, you're adding it to a list. That's the way I tend to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you tag something with phone, you're adding it to the phone list, but it might also be in the Max Sparky customer support list. And yeah. But at the end of the day, you're just managing lists. And I find that helps to kind of demystify tags. You're projects and tags are really just lists and they they function differently within the app but at the end of the day they're just lists of things and, and what the thing that got me was i found myself creating tags for the purpose of creating tags i mean i i have this math i did a video in the field guide on tags and i've got all these different ways you know energy level time of day there's all these different indexes you can create through tag systems and i just found that most of those i don't use so that when I create this burden of myself to add these tags that I know I'm never going to search by, well, what's the point of that? You know, so, and I'm not trying to convert anybody here. If you like your tags, use your tags, but uh, you can use OmniFocus without them. I mean, you can also use it without projects, but at some point that's just anarchy, right? But the, uh, but I, I like tags, but I just felt like I'm not going to make them mandatory for me. And that's just a personal choice, but you know, you be you. And at the end of the day, it's looking at, are you getting the appropriate lists out of OmniFocus? Yeah, and exactly. uh, it's not really about using a feature, whether you're in team tags or team anti-tag or something like that. It's yeah. it's ultimately about, are you getting value out of it? Are you building the things that are important? Are you keeping up on your stuff? And yeah, that type of thing. You know, ultimately, mastery of OmniFocus is not about checking things off in OmniFocus. It's about, you know, pursuing what's important to you. I mean, is it serving the big goals? Yeah. If it's not, then you got a problem. Yeah, and that's why I highly recommend checking out David's productivity field guide because this is a, an opportunity to step away from the technology. So ultimately, you're going to be using the technology much more effectively because you're bringing clarity to it. The technology is becoming like an assistant or sidekick or something rather than the, the the focal point of what you're doing in your life. Yeah, the tortured analogy is, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are at climbing ladders if they're leaning against the wrong wall, you know. So <laughs> you got to figure out, you know, get the ladder on the right wall and then OmniFocus can really be a benefit. Yeah, or I often talk about getting really efficient at going around in circles that <laughs> yeah. you ultimately don't necessarily get anywhere. Yeah. All right, and Francine saying clever use of tags to sort out the email response topics. Yeah, I agree. That's a really innovative use. And uh, this is where automation comes into. If you can take an email and turn it into an OmniFocus action very quickly, then you haven't you've you haven't added any significant drag to the system. Yeah. If it takes you a minute for every email, then at that point, it you lose the the gain there. Yeah. So I, I probably takes me about five seconds. You know. Yeah. When I think about it, you know, just. I, I sign a project and it and the customer service tag. And then there's um a weird feeling that I don't feel like I'm carrying the weight of it. Like when it's in my mail system, I feel like I'm carrying the weight of it. And then when OmniFocus is like, okay, well, I need a I need to be a big boy now and make a block and go through and answer a bunch of those. But um but I'm not gonna see them every time I go in my email app. Yeah, you'll batch them when it's appropriate to do so, yeah. and, and you'll know where to find them all, too. So I think it yeah. means things don't slip through the cracks when with that system. And that that is a real benefit of OmniFocus. Uh, I did not find a single task manager in kind of looking at the other alternatives that captured email as efficiently as OmniFocus. Randy is asking if you can show the do perspective again. And do is based on the Yoda quote from Star Wars, because I'm a nerd, Randy. Do or do not, there is no try uh, from episode five from Master Yoda. 
And I just like that. So I made one called Do. I even put a period after it just to make sure I understood that. And it's a very simple perspective. Um, there's flagged, do soon, or bench. I didn't talk about bench. Bench is a tag that I use that is something less than flagged. I wanted another layer of priority. And I like woodworking. So I have a workbench in my wood shop. And it's important growing up a woodworker, my dad was, and, and he was a furniture guy. You always clean your bench at the end of the day. So I, I like the idea. I put the tag bench on things that I want to see today and get to, but I don't want, they don't really justify a flag or a due date. So it's like a second layer priority. So any one of those bench, do soon or flagged shows up in the due perspective. And so like that one I showed you earlier with the consider that had a bench tag on it. That's why it shows up. But everything else in that project does not have a bench tag unless I choose to put it on. Then it needs to be available. That's super important because these some of these are start date triggered, you know, uh, and then none of the following. Well, this is just because I'm making the field guide and I had this test project called Secret Layer. And I didn't want Secret Layer stuff showing up in my daily review because that's just that's a sample project. So I, I excluded it. But the actual thing you would need is um, uh, flagged, do soon, or possibly another priority that you choose and available. It's a very simple perspective. Klaus is asking, are your checklist tasks distributed through your projects and roles? Yes. And then just yes. consolidated? Did you ever uh, kind of a similar question? Do you ever say, I just want to see my my checklist ones for Max Berkey or something like that? I can just exclusively pick, you know, where it's going and then just show me those. Here's the household ones, uh, you know, gardening ones. So you, you can select it with the sidebar. And that's why the best method of this, I think, is tag-based after I was trashing tags 10 minutes ago. But, you know, I've got uh, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, semi-annually, yearly tags, and those are all triggered in this perspective. But then I can sprinkle the tasks in their appropriate projects, and then I can filter them later. You know, that to me is where tags really, really make sense. How do you handle standard checklists for repeating projects? For example, a checklist for a podcast. So interpret this to mean if you have a whole bunch of sort of actions you need to do to prepare for MPU or something like that. Yeah, exactly. A automation, you know, they're generated through automation. And they're, uh, you know, uh, I particularly am a fan at this point of the um, the task paper import. You know, the OmniFocus built in the automation for task paper generation of repeating tasks. I think it's the easiest way and then you attach that to a shortcut. So every one of my like major areas of concern has something like that. So I, I create a shortcut that creates a new project. Tim has covered this in his course. I've covered it in my courses. Um, and then, but they're still on a pool-based system. So if I have a task, like I have a task called Consider Mac Power Users Preparation that shows up uh, twice a week. And when it does, I'll go into the uh, Mac Power Users folder and OmniFocus and look at the pending and future episodes, check in with guests, work on outlines, do whatever needs to be done to get the show ready for recording. Um, so that the project itself is generated through automation, but there is not a lot of priorities. It's not going to like, you know, blister my do list with a bunch of stuff from it. Instead, I'm going to pick a time and I'm going to go in and knock off as much of that as I can. Something I would like to see OmniFocus get better at is um, kind of that type of project management, kind of like a Kanban system. You can sort of do it with the status uh, flag in a project where you can mark it on hold, active, uh, was it um, stopped or deleted? I mean, you know, they, they have limited functionality. Uh, I would really like in the future to see OmniFocus add columns and give you more, more indexes you can work on that way. I know you can do it through tags, but I think it should be more baked in. Question is, do you simply filter emails by tag when you want to answer them, or do you have perspectives for different types of email? Right now, what I'm doing is a customer service block. I'm trying to dig out of a hole. And so so what I do, and then it shows up for each property, organize, the uh, customer service emails with the tags organized by project. So then, And then what I try to do is take on one at a time 
and do as many as I can in that section during the block. Um, in the future, I might get more granular with it, but uh, for now, this is working. But to me, an important realization was the how much faster I am at it when I group them by property as opposed to just hitting them randomly. Klaus was commenting, I have a Zapier automation that allows me to just flag an email in Outlook, which then creates a task in OmniFocus. It's really helped to manage. Uh, it's similar to how David is doing. Yeah, Outlook has been a pain point for quite a few years because uh, there isn't yeah. functionality in place to do what the Omni group does with the the mail app. And, yeah. and I was a little hopeful last November. They said it was coming Microsoft the Apple script support that would be needed, but then they deferred it to November of 2024, or December or something like that. So, so the workaround is to use Apple Mail, if possible, to access your Outlook emails. And I realize for some people that's just not an option. So yeah, what Klaus is proposing, I think is a, yeah, a great option, assuming you can use Zapier too. Yeah. And Francine says, so is it fair to say that the value of a tag is that you can use it in a perspective, I make it show up in a list. Yep, yep. It's an index I can use. I mean, like Tim said, um, a project is is a single is a single matrix. You know, it's a, I guess it's a single vector of organization. You can't have something in two different projects at the same time, which is you know can be a limitation. With a tag, a tag can show up in multiple places. That's the power of tags. And I, you know, I guess I came off a little aggressive, but I like tags and I use them for that purpose. Like I can have customer service across multiple projects as an example, or my checklist tags. And so I find them useful, but what I found was I don't find I need them for everything I do. And um, the process of going through an inbox and trying to make up some kind of tag just so the thing gets out of your inbox seems silly to me. So I stopped doing it. If you think back to paper-based systems, if you had a phone call to make that was part of a project objective, the challenge was, do I put this on my list of phone calls or do I yeah. put it on my list of actions for the project? And the beauty of digital technology and OmniFocus is you can put it both places without having to duplicate anything. So I use communication means as a tag. So if I'm going to send an email, because I also send Zoom videos to some of my people. So I have a different... I use those and I, I batch them using the tag system. But there there are some things that don't involve a communication means and just don't seem to me, you know, like, uh, okay, so an example for me is record um, recording ads for podcasts, right? Um, I guess I could tag those as like something I do in my recording software, but in all the years I've used OmniFocus, I've never said, well, I'm in my recording software. Let me just go pull up a list of things I want to do in that. Instead, it's more purpose-driven. When I go into that recording software, it's to do a specific thing, and I'm not there to do the other thing. In fact, that's that's going to be a distraction. So so that's an example where I wouldn't. But, I guess if you were in a space, like you've got control over your space, but if you... yeah. At a situation where you had certain quiet times during the day, it might be useful to say, show me everything I want to record. And then that's where a tag could be useful. But in think, your case, you can probably record any time of day or night. And yeah, and, uh, yeah you're not, you don't have that constraint in a sense. I think, Tim, you fully don't approve of my, <laughs> my inbox. <laughs> no, I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> we had Joe Bulig on once. He doesn't use any tags at all, so... I've wow. gotten over that now. So. Yep. <laughs> or he didn't use to. I'm not sure if Crazy that's still man. the case. <laughs> anyway, use features in OmniFocus if they're useful. I think so. that's what it comes down to. Something I've <laughs> using that I historically didn't use is time estimates. Like, mm. I always felt like that was extra work I didn't need. But um, the last six months or so, I started adding them, and I actually kind of like them now. So, you know, it's an evolution. Yeah, we had uh, one of our guests, Michael Kirkman-Jones. He said if... Uh, a task or an action doesn't have a time associated with it. It's not fully defined because you haven't even thought about how long is this going to take. So that got me on to the duration ones. And I've got perspectives called big rocks, small rocks, and pebbles now, yeah. which I find can be really useful. So if I want to just get the satisfaction of completing some pebbles, I can maybe do 10 of them and 
in 10 minutes sometimes and yeah just sort of clear some things before lunch uh kevin's asking about someday maybe lists uh do you keep those in OmniFocus, or do they live outside, or what's yeah, the, I, the deal I'm with not those? A, uh, I'm not a GTD purist. Uh, I think yeah. from the beginning, I haven't been, and um, as the years go by, I even get further away from it. Yeah, I don't really build those someday, maybe lists. I mean, I do have lists in my systems of like future things I want to work on, future ideas for content. Um, that's like a, one I do. I'll possibly be considered a someday maybe list. Like for the Max Markey Labs, I make two videos a week for the Labs members. And I'm always looking for interesting ideas and I'll see a piece of software and I save it to a link to it in a list in um, in OmniFocus called Labs Content Ideas, LCI. You know, I think of yeah. these things by the keyboard shortcut I type. LCI, yeah, sure. Labs Content Ideas. And that is a someday maybe list. And I go once a week and I pick from that something to work on for the next week. So that kind of is, but not like in anything near to kind of the David Allen kind of approach to them. That's one part of GTD I don't really resonate with because to me someday and maybe are two different things. Someday yeah. is something I'm going to do, but I'm not sure when and maybe is more in the realm of I just had this idea when I was out walking the dog. And, and so I think... Yeah, it's a matter of what you call them. A list of ideas is a maybe list, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think, yeah, the nomenclature can really make a big difference. And if there's a term that doesn't resonate with you, just pick a different term. Yeah. I'm um, increasingly trying to enter durations for every task. I'd like a setting an OmniFocus to clear inbox only after tasks have a duration. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting idea. And I recommend sending that to the Omni group emailing them uh, uh it might be nice to have an option to turn that on but as long as it's not enforced i think kind of like the tags one one of the nice things is if you set a duration and you drag a task into fantastical or um busy Cal, it will respect the duration value and create an event with that duration so if you want to block schedule like when uh i was reading the comments I got the idea, well, maybe I should be putting durations on my consider tasks, mm. like put a two hour duration on a block of time and then just drag it into the calendar in the morning. The problem for that is that those aren't set in stone for me. Like because I'm close to release of this field guide, I'm going to put a large block into it today where sometimes I would only say, well, I'm going to give that two hours today, but instead I'm going to give it four hours or something like that. So it doesn't really follow rigid rules for me. I use mine's kind of similar and some of my projects have a progress action like the uh, getting back on track course that I was working over I guess several months on and yeah. I'd have a, an action that would show up in my in my case it's a today list to say make progress on this project and yeah. and then I'll sometimes adjust the the duration some days it might be 30 minutes some days it might be four hours and yeah but the idea is it's not bringing all that stuff onto my today perspective it's more inviting me to go into this project kind of like what Karash is talking about at least visit the project and and see what's going on uh, what's waiting for my attention and even just give it five minutes add a few actions to it and call it a day yeah so it's yeah, yeah definitely in the same realm and again a lot of this is the same concepts they're just named a little bit differently I think that gets yeah. to most of the question. One question about the cue cards. So to make sure I understand correctly, if you put something on a cue card, does it get marked as done within OmniFocus? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, okay. Crazy. <laughs> so it's basically been handed off to an analog system. At yeah, that basically. Point and, yeah. I, I consider it like the last mile of productivity is just you write it down and you check it off. And uh, Okay, and if it doesn't yeah. make the cut for some reason, it's... Or it loses its cue card status, it would be marked as incomplete in OmniFocus, I assume. Yeah, I can go in OmniFocus and reverse it. But usually what happens is I'm very, first of all, the nice thing is there's only 10 slots on these cards. So there's only so much you can put on them. And if I don't finish it today, often I'll put it on the card for tomorrow or the next day and still keep it in play on the cards. Sometimes, for whatever reason, it becomes something I'm not going to do, even though I had committed to it in the morning. This is rare, but it happens. And when that happens, if it's something I still want to complete, I'll go in OmniFocus and reverse it and mark it as, as unchecked. And then it'll show up. And, you know, I, I kind of think of 
OmniFocus is this this ocean or this bank of tasks, and then me pulling them out each day is kind of the final little bit of it. The the only thing that's different though is because I guess I need to be clear is that the pull based stuff, the thing I was talking about at the beginning of the session, those don't make it to the cards. On the card, I put a block down that hey, I'm going to do that block. But when it comes time to do, as the example we've been using today, the OmniFocus for field guide block. It just says O4FG block here on the card. But when I when I go to check that off, what I'm doing is I'm going into the project in OmniFocus and I'm hitting as many of those tasks as I can. I don't write write down each one. On yeah, that would get to be pretty tedious, but you're yeah. giving it sort of representation on the card to, so yeah. it doesn't get forgotten. And I think yeah. that's a big challenge with digital systems in general is things can so often get buried and that's what will cause people to embrace analog systems because if it's sitting on your desk and you're staring at it or it's stuck to your monitor or something you can't ignore it and yeah so i, I think i can definitely see the value and especially when there's a lot going on i'll sometimes move to uh, some analog notes and things just to get it in front of me and get my head straight and yeah. and then yeah as you were saying i'd go into omnifocus for the nitty-gritty and say okay i've got this time or i i've got this sort of big rock to complete and omnifocus is going to walk me through the the component pieces of it another piece of it is that i'm not particularly satisfied with the omnifocus widget i i think it, i think it needs i don't know it's just it's very spartan you know i'd mm -hmm. like to see them do more with that it would be great to, as we were talking before we started recording, it'd be great to have more graphical components. Like I'd love to be able to have like a graph showing up in a widget showing how far through my list am I for today. Yeah. And just something to yeah bring more of a visual to it without having to read through a list. And I'm hoping with all the Swift UI benefits that come, that's going to be relatively easy to implement in the future. In the meantime, there are things like Charty that can be used to to emulate that, but it is really nice to have that baked right into the software. Thank you so much, David, for being here today. And especially if you want to go deeper into what David shared today, um, the Omni Focus 4 field guide, as David mentioned, will be out on Monday, and he takes you into a really deep dive. Uh, I've been through most of the field guide now. I'm going through the automation section, which is... Uh, I know where David Sparks is definitely an expert and very passionate about automation. So I'm sure there's something to learn for everybody in, in the field guide. And, uh, and it is a, a really a real world setup too. So there's a lot of benefits in learning based on something that's being used day to day. On that point, it, it was really fun because I have uh, stopped being a lawyer. I could actually use my active database through the course. And that was fun because I feel like one of the better ways to learn is to see it like being used as opposed to just one sample project. So that was, that was a nice benefit I was able to do now. I don't have to worry about disclosing client data anymore. Okay. Well, thanks again, David. Thanks to everyone who took time to join us here live. And I really appreciate all the great questions and comments. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.